Every firefighter knows a fellow firefighter that is either dealing with cancer or who has lost their battle of cancer. We see these most aggressive cancers in the fire service happening at a much younger age than the general population. The fires that burn today are much more volatile and hazardous than they were 20 years ago. Science has proven that materials that burn today contain carcinogens that are directly linked to firefighter cancer. Essentially, today's fires put us at greater risk than 20 years ago. We cannot stand idle while our brothers and sisters are dying. Since 2015, the Sylvester Comprehensive Cancer Center has been studying this risk. We know that exposure to that is harmful to your health. And what they have discovered is that when we leave the fire scene, we bring the threat home with us. It's in your clothes, it's in the cab, it's in the firehouse, and for many of you, you bring it home to your family. Because of discoveries by the Firefighter Cancer Initiative, we are changing our approaches to decon processes. These are all steps that we must take to leave soot and dangerous compounds out the fire scene, lowering our exposure to known cancer hazards. To you, this may seem like simple cleaning practices, but when done regularly and consistently, our research has shown that your risk and exposures have decreased significantly. This firefighter did not engage in the decontamination practices and will be emitting carcinogens for the next four to eight hours. Everyone that they come into contact with, including themselves and the public, is at risk. This firefighter completed the on-scene decontamination procedures and has reduced their risk by 85%. The transition our fire service is going through today is similar to what we saw in the late 1980s with communicable disease. It was not uncommon for a firefighter paramedic to regularly be exposed to blood or bodily fluids and operate in blood-stained clothing. You would never see those things done today. Today we are challenging the fire service culture again. The importance of this can't be underemphasized. It just may save your life. You should complete on-scene decon in the following steps. The incident commander will ensure that the decon area is established. The driver engineer will set up decon line with low pressure from a clean water source and mark the area with a cone. The driver engineer will connect the reducer to the discharge and hose to the reducer. Flake the hose out and attach the nozzle. Supply the line with idle pressure from a clean water source. After you leave the building, stay on air. When possible, decon should happen while you're still protected and before you go to rehab. On your way to decon cone, the straps of the SCBA should be loosened to aid the decon process. The crews will now decon each other. The firefighter with the least amount of air will be decon first. Make sure the PPE is tightened up and no areas of the gear when water can get inside the inner lining. Avoid getting water in the top of the jacket near the neck. Only spray the collar line down. The helmet will be cleaned independently later along with the other firefighter equipment. While being rinsed with water, you should stand straight upright with your arms out to the side. This will give a quick 360 rinse from the collar line down. Next, again, work with the collar line down. Use a soft bristle brush with soap mixture to scrub the gear. Be sure to get under the pack and straps and include all possible collection points such as armpit and groin area. Rinse soap mixture off the gear from collar line down. Next, clean the boots. Then switch positions. The firefighter that was deconned will now do the same to the other firefighter, again while both staying on air. Once you both complete the outer scrub and rinse, you can come off air and start to remove your PPE. Fire gloves should be removed first while carefully avoiding skin contact with the exterior of the gloves. Bunker gear should be removed and placed in a drop zone. This area should be downwind of the rehab area. Using the department provided wipes, clean your hands very well. Use a new set of wipes for your neck, front and back, and the area behind your ears. Use different wipes when cleaning your entire face. Don't forget your head and hair. Lastly, use a fresh wipe for your eyes. When you're released from the scene, you will bag your gear with department-issued bags to decrease your exposure to off-gassing. Although it has undergone gross decon, it is recommended that you still wear EMS gloves. You will bag the following pieces of equipment, gloves, coats, boots, and pants, and helmet. In this order, you will bag your gear 
After folding the coat, it will be placed on top of the gloves, followed by the boots and pants. Lastly, clean the helmet by scrubbing the outer shell and wiping the inner soft lining. Do not saturate the inner lining. After cleaning, place the helmet in the bag with the top pointed toward the boot and coat. The bag will be twisted and taped closed. The remaining loose end will be folded over and taped again to complete the sealing. If a second set is not available at the scene, the firefighter hood and gloves should be exchanged for clean ones at the scene. All tools and equipment that were used at the incident will be cleaned on the scene with a soft bristle brush and soap water mixture. The bags of gear will be placed in the apparatus. Bagged PPE can be easily deployed if the need arises. Firefighters should shower within the hour when returning to the fire station. I know for many of us, this is more than a job. This is your family. This is your community. The changes you make today will impact you, your family, and your colleagues. Not just for today, but for years to come. Together, we can change the culture and we reduce our risk for cancer.